Good morning and welcome to New Day Northwest. I'm Kim Holcomb filling in for Margaret who is enjoying a well-deserved vacation. Starting things off is a writer, speaker, and activist from the Bronx who found herself catapulted into the Marvel Universe as the writer behind its first queer Latina superhero, America Chavez. Gabby Rivera's first critically acclaimed book, Juliet Takes a Breath, is a young adult novel recently released in hardcover. We are so excited to chat with Gabby this morning. Hello, welcome. Hi. You are like a ray of light. We just kind of been chatting before the show started. It's so great to have you here. And this is actually your first television appearance it like this. It is. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Well, Hi, we, Seattle. <laughs> we, we have so much to talk about because you have so much going on. But let's start with Juliet Takes a Breath. So this was a book that you actually wrote three years ago. Yes, it was published originally in 2016, independent, and now here we are with Penguin Random House. I, I mean, you're looking at your book in, in a hardcover, First which is time. very exciting. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> just sort of give the audience um, sure. a general overview of what the book is about. Well, Juliet Takes a Breath is about uh, Juliet Milagros Palante. She is 19 years old, uh, queer from the Bronx, and she is discovering herself. She's discovering feminism, and she's in love with a book about out feminism and takes herself from the Bronx to Portland, Oregon and lands in the middle of white hippie land. <laughs> how, how did you choose the Northwest and specifically Portland to be her destination? Well, let's be honest, this book is definitely autobiographical. Yeah. So I took myself out of the Bronx and followed a feminist to Portland when I was 19. And so what better to write about, right, than putting it to a character. Right, and she the book starts off where she's under a fair amount of pressure because she's like, right before I move to Portland, I'm gonna go ahead and come out to my family. Yes, she does. She comes out at this big dinner table to her whole Puerto Rican family, and it's like she has to do it, and then she gets to run to Portland. Right. <laughs> so one of the things that I think is important for people to know about this book is that when she's on this sort of journey of self-discovery, one of the things that she comes to is like, I have to define who I am. I can't yes. let other people define that for me. Why was that an important part of this book for you? Well, of course, for Julia and for a lot of us, people are always telling us what kind of girls we can be, what kind of queer people we can be, who we can't be, what we're allowed to think about ourselves and what we're not allowed to do. And Julia is very much in love with herself and excited to be queer and to be chubby and to just be here. And so she goes on this journey to say, well, what does womanhood mean to me? What does feminism mean to me? What does it mean for me to be Puerto Rican and queer? And she gets to do that through this book, but also through her family and through uh, a ton of self-discovery. And if I understand correctly, it was because of this book that you got an out of the blue call from Marvel saying, hi, would you <laughs> like to write this character for us, the first Latina queer superhero? Isn't it wild? <laughs> I mean, what do you even say when you get that call? You call your mom and you're like, mom, <laughs> Marvel Comics is, wants me to do a thing. And then she screams at your father and it's great. You okay. know what I mean? Um, yeah, they, Will Moss, the editor at uh, for America Chavez, was doing that good work that you do. And he was reading Latina, queer, LGBT books. And he found Juliet Takes a Breath and was like, we would love your voice for the America Chavez comic. How, and I was in. How different is that writing versus this writing? It is wildly different. Right. You know, in uh, Juliet, I can just take 20 pages to write about how thick and beautiful she is. But in comics, you have to think in panels and squares and like images. But the challenge is, was so lovely. And I had a lot of support from the editor team at Marvel. And I learned, like literally, you're looking at the first ever comic I wrote. So. Big. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, look. It's my Instagram. <laughs> so the ride could go even further than this no now because there's talk about her appearing in a film on the big screen, yes. potentially. Yes, I'm hoping the best for America Chavez. You know, that's a Marvel property, so that's in their domain. I'm just excited for her to have these wings. There's so many uh, young people, little Latina girls that are like, I love America Chavez, and, and it's just beautiful to see. And she fits into the X-Men universe of Marvel, is that right? Uh, she's a young Avenger, okay. she's, yeah, she's in that world. I mean, in episode three, I have her being mentored by Storm. Uh, right, so, right, Yeah, That's so she's great. all in that world. And you do get to create extra special things, like I love, is it Sotomayor University? Yes, that's, look at yeah, that's great. This I love it, homework. it's so good. <laughs> well, what, what informs your writing for both of these 
mediums. Is right. it just your personal experience? Are you drawing from other people that you're meeting and seeing? What inspires you at this point? My queer, trans, non-binary people of color communities are always inspiring me, right? So I am looking to us. Yes, it's coming from my Puerto Rican queer experience, but I'm looking throughout <laughs> our genres and young folks, queer kids of color, they're always pushing in a beautiful way and saying, well, this is great, this, repre this representation is great, but we need more disabled characters, we need native characters, we need more, and that push for more is so inspiring, you know? And I read that you have heard those um, sort of calls to action from people far younger than you. What do you think that, because that these are consumers of these books too. This is a YA novel. Yes. This is, I mean, people of all ages Teen enjoy comic, comic. Yes, yeah. that's true. But like, what does that tell you about your consumers and that generation and how they're gonna factor into the future of everything? I mean, one, I, this is my family. I don't look at anybody as a consumer, right? They're my yeah. family. They need a lot of love. We, I just feel like, it is our job as thriving queer people to love as much as we can on the next generation coming up. They are rightfully pissed about climate change and they are ready to em embrace their identities and they just want the rest of us to keep up and catch up right. or shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and in that regard, you've become a mentor to a lot of people. Oh, you've done a TED, she's done a TED talk, you guys. <laughs> um, so why is that element important to you in this journey that you're taking yourself? I mean, it, like mentorship is like if I feel a personal responsibility like I am alive I am thriving I'm supported I'm loved I must give that back right whether that is talking a young person through their comic pitch introducing them to my agent or just saying I'm gonna sit here and sign this and listen to you talk to me about how you came out to your mom and you get this time with me one-on-one -on -one. like all those different elements of mentorship like that is my that is my job like uh, the Reverend Kelly Brown Douglas always talks about we need to pay our rent for our time on this earth. Yeah. And so that that's my rent to pay, you know? So ultimately, what would be the ideal sort of um, review of this, not from a critic, but from someone who picks up this book and reads it and says, here's what these words meant to me? I just want when queer kids of color to pick up, Juliet takes a breath for them to be to know in their hearts and say, this book was written for me. I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming here today. Man, you are you. awesome. And you have so much going on. We cannot wait to see what happens next because there's going to be huge things. You come back when she's in a Marvel movie. And oh, we'll I'll talk be back about that. right here with you. <laughs> I bet they'll cast you in that movie, too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Juliet Takes a Breath is available in hardcover, in stores, and online right now. When we come back, our All About the Home show for fall begins with amazing flower arrangements you will never have to water after this. I can get behind that.